Here's the Breeze Audio TPA 3116 uh, power amplifier. Well, and actually, um, this particular one is uh, branded Knob Sound. But you can buy these um, off eBay or Amazon. I got this one from Amazon. It was uh, $40 shipped, Amazon Prime. And um, they're all basically identical inside. And they, of course, yeah. Uh, use the TPA 3116 power amplifier chip most likely um, a fake knockoff version since these are Chinese um, you know manufactured that chip is made by Texas Instruments uh, the, uh, the actual chip so these might be actually maybe uh, rejects from the manufacturing line or they're just clones but either way they're still pretty good quality and uh, for forty dollars these sound great on the back we have two RCA's and we have binding posts here which of course can accept uh, wires you want to screw them and put them through the hole but you can also put banana plugs in these which is uh, very handy and then it takes a DC power input I think the rated voltage is from 8 to 24 volts you will not get the full power output on uh, you know 8 volts obviously or even 12 volts like a Li Pi, uh, you would definitely need to use a 24 volt power supply to use this. But because it's 24 volts, the best thing is you just can use any old laptop power supply. If you have some of those lying around, just plug those in. They should just fit right in and power this up perfectly. And typically, those are 20 volts or 19 volts, and 90 watts is a pretty common size of mine. But decent build quality. Um, volume knob is. Uh, pretty nice quality it, it does not have an indicator marking to show you where the volume is currently set to of course you have the that's the set screw to remove it and you have the power switch and you do have an LED in there I'm not going to review this amplifier at all because you should go to FF Kosaig's channel he does a full review of this if you just search for Breeze Audio where he tests everything about this he has very expensive test gear that can measure the distortion and power output and everything you'd ever want to know about an amplifier. And his reviews of these types of things are absolutely fantastic. But what I learned from his channel is compared to the, the old Li Pi 2020 Plus, this amp, while costing about double the price, absolutely blows the Li Pi out of the water when it comes to sound quality and power output. And that's pretty important. I'm going to be running this on some Klipsch speakers I have. And if I recall from his review, um, with a 24 volt power supply, I think he gets 22 watts RMS per channel out of this amp. While the Li Pi can only do 8 or 9 cleanly without a lot of distortion. And it looks much nicer. I mean, the Li Pi looks like crap. This, this looks pretty nice. Good quality. Anyways, I opened mine up. And right away... Wow, I took the heatsink off. Obviously, uh, it does come with this little red heatsink that's sort of screwed on there. Look how much thermal compound they they had put on here. Basically, none. <laughs> and then um, look at the condition of this. <laughs> what a mess! So the reason why I took this off is because. Um, the factory settings for this chip, uh, there's an adjustable gain and it's controlled by these resistors here. And this is uh, too high. Uh, the way the gain is, it's I think 32 decibels. And it actually impacts the performance of this amp. And not to mention, um, when you have the volume you know, turned up just a tiny bit, the knob, it's already pretty loud, too loud. It creates a lot of background hiss as tested by another YouTuber. Thank you very much. So you just check the data sheet and you can alter the resistance here. If you go to the data sheet for the TPA 3116, this is where it tells you how to configure the, the input gain. So essentially, this board, these Breeze amps, are all configured at 32 dB of gain, which uh, result, you know, is a 39K and a 100K, like I pointed out. So all you have to do is remove the 100K, just flick it off the board altogether, and change the 56k and the one thing to keep in mind is that the input impedance which was uh, 15k is now 60k so that does change things but that shouldn't be so bad now it does talk about here that 
it requires some kind of input capacitance and a high pass filter and essentially they are different so I, I'm not quite sure how this board is configured it probably has this 5.6 microfarad capacitor on it and it is calling for a 1.5 so if it's running 5.6 it's, it's too high um, it says uh, if the flat base response required down to 20 Hertz then recommended cutoff frequency is a tenth of that or 2 Hertz uh, table 2 lists the recommended AC coupling capacitors for each gain step if a minus 3 de decibel is acceptable at 20 Hertz then 10 times lower capacitor can be used for example a 1 microfarad capacitor can be used uh, so that would be if the, you have a 36 um, microfarad gain then a 1 is fine so obviously we're uh, over, probably over capped at this point, um, which I'm assuming is actually gonna uh, maybe increase the base response on this unit a little bit. But I'm gonna do the gain mod and just see how that goes. He, he uh, the YouTuber changed his and retested it because he has some expensive test equipment, and uh, it worked quite well. It had good performance. It had better performance after the mod. Not only was the hiss reduced because, of course, the gain was lower but also uh, the actual overall performance was improved as well. Look at this. Look at the way they <laughs> do the LED. Not only that, the, uh, look at the power switch. It's, uh, it's so crooked. <laughs> so um, I might try to fix that. Uh, I didn't really notice, to be honest, uh, when, when the front cover is on, it's, it's actually okay. But I'm going to replace this LED with a white one, and uh, I'm going to do the mod. Okay, this is where I am so far. So. First of all, I switched out the LED for a warm white. Pretty easy. Did the did the ghetto bending there, as as you can see. And uh, I haven't yet cleaned this up, but what I did is um, to get rid of the gain of 32 decibels. There's two resistors here. There's a 39k ohm and a 100k. And essentially, there are two surface mount resistors. Um, I soldered these wires onto here. The one, to basically I want to reduce this to 20 decibels of gain. And to do that, you switch R1, which was the 39, uh, the 39K, you switch that to 5.6, and you open the other one. So there's a 100K resistor under there, and that becomes 100K, or I'm sorry, becomes open. So um, the problem is, is when the heat sinks on here, there's very little clearance. It kind of covers everything up. I don't have any surface mount resistors to put in here. So I'm going to have to use a, you know, oh, actually, I don't even have a 5.6K. So I sort of, I'm going to make here uh, one that's close enough. This becomes, I think, 5.5. So I'm going to hope that's going to work. And what I'm going to do is, um, oops, <laughs> dropping everything. Trim off the legs here, um, kind of fold it over and put some heat shrink. And then I soldered this, this loop on here. I'm going to cut this and I'm going to basically tuck these resistors in over here somewhere. But yeah, so I'll just have these remote. And um, essentially when I was soldering onto the chip, I was just making sure that there would be enough clearance. So uh, I did have to kind of squish that down because initially the wires were sticking up. So I just used a screwdriver while I was soldering and pushed down on the wires. And that kind of did it. And when I test fit the, when I test fit this on, yeah, you won't be able to see on the camera, but definitely it is, uh, has enough clearance. So the 100K, so the 100K resistor originally is underneath the wires there. You, you can't see it, but 3900 are right next to each other. And that sets the that sets the input gain on this chip. To desolder surface mount, it's pretty easy. You basically just put a blob of solder on each side of a, of a resistor, and then you just basically, that, that gives it a little bit of thermal mass, and then you just quickly touch both, and you can flick the, the chip right off. The, the thermal mass um, of the extra solder just allows it to stay molten long enough that you can just flick and you can flick it off. It's actually pretty easy. That's the easiest way to do it. Alright, so there's what I've done so far. So under the uh, blue shrink wrap is the is the resistors and I'm just going to put another piece of shrink wrap over the top here. And I just plugged it in and tested it and it works. So I'm going to clean up this mess. I've touched up a couple of the other solder joints here and there. The white LED works. I'm going to put the heat shrink on the on the LED here, and I'm going to clean up this mess and put a little new, more thermal compound on there, and uh, reattach this heat sink here. Clean that off. Reattach that. When you have it to 20 dB like this, you got to send it a line level input, and basically, you know, unless you have a powerful input, you're not going to get the full volume. But 
that's worth it. That just means, you know, there's better control. You're not just turning it up a little bit and it's blasting you. Yeah, so here's the amp. I'm just giving it a test. But as you can see, it's off right now. You're able to see that the LEDs dimly lit there. See, there's the white, the soft white LED or warm white. But if I turn it on, now it's brighter. So, anyways, um, it works well. Uh, gain is a lot reduced. So, of course, uh, with the computer I have it hooked up to right now, uh, when you turn it all the way up, it's actually it's loud. But overall, um, it sounds pretty good. I, I didn't adjust any of the capacitors, like I said, now that the input impedance has changed. But, yeah, sounds good. So one of the issues is the uh, these inductors are quite wobbly. So this isn't the most, um, you know, secure board. So I'm going to hot glue things down a little bit just to give it a little bit more stability. So I'm just going to blast some between. Uh, over here on the side. Oh, I'm running out. I have another stick here. <laughs> I've had this glue gun. <laughs> I don't even know how long. I think I paid like a dollar for it at the 99 cent store a long time ago. But uh, you know what? It works. Um, while I'm at it, I might as well just goop these capacitors. Why not? Give a little extra strength. Uh, this is the little resistor I did, so I'll just goop that down as well. And that's probably good enough. I, I don't think I need to do any more than this. Well, there it is. The knob sound, <laughs> worst name ever, or Breeze Audio TPA 3116 mini amplifier above the venerable Lipi 2020 Plus. You know, um, obviously the uh, the new one looks a billion times nicer. The build quality is just amazing comparatively. Um, you know, it just, the knob feels very nice. I mean, the Lee Pi, you know, I don't have any trouble with scratchy, uh, scratchy sound. And I put some rubber feet on the Lee Pi so it doesn't slide around. But, I mean, look at it. It looks like an old CB radio from the, from the 70s or something. While this, this just looks pretty modern. I would like to try to remove this terrible writing that's on here, though. That's pretty ugly. But as you can see, the uh, the white LED I put in there eh, it gives a little touch. Of course, I did this on the Lee Pi as well. This has blue by default, and it's horrible. So it's uh, it's white there. I'm actually going to continue to use the Lee Pi down here on my bench because um, the speakers I have are okay, but I have it just hooked up to my computer, which doesn't have the best audio quality anyways, and I don't really turn up that loud here. This is just for listening to music while I'm working. I think what I need to do is maybe put a little mark, a little marker on the knob so I can, so I can tell where the, where it is. And that's turned all the way up there. It's amazing, actually. I mean, it's not like it's silent in my basement, but when I do put that on and I put my ear right next to the speakers, there's my computers turned on right now, so it makes a bit of noise. But I cannot hear any hiss coming out of this thing. Pretty pleased. And um, I'm using this 90 watt uh, Lenovo power supply with it, so plenty of, plenty of electrical power to power it, 20, 20 volts, because you need voltage to push the watts. Anyhow, so there you go. Um, I do recommend this amp. It's, I'm pretty pleased with it. I think it was a good purchase. And the gain mod, which is, uh, is absolutely worth doing. So if you buy one of these, I would do that mod. <laughs> hey, okay, a little funny bonus content. Okay, so I'm driving the amp right now with this power supply and look it's got a lot of reserve capacity obviously 
Let's see how long it takes when I unplug it to actually die. Still, it's fading. Ah, oh, there it went out. <laughs> it took quite a while. It comes back instantly, but... It's quite a few seconds where it continues to work. <laughs> um, there's decent capacitance inside the unit, and at moderate, you know, low volumes, which I have it at right now, this is just a good background listening level. Between this uh, chunky power supply and the capacitors in the unit, <laughs> there's quite a lot of power left over. The light does dim. Um, slowly dims away. <laughs> but, you know, because this uh, amp works down to 8 volts, you get a decent amount of uh, free... Oh, there it goes. Funny, huh? So, I thought I'd just, just show that. 